Hey, so I'm Alan Pestalucci. I'm a developer on Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. Uh, so I've had the, uh, the experience of working in VR for a little over a year now. I've got to try a bunch of different headsets of all the current VR platforms. Um, and I've also had the chance to try Steam VR with the HTC Vive headset. Um, and I wanted to share my thoughts. Uh, there's a couple of uh, things that make this VR platform just amazing and, and really stand out against everything else that I've seen so far. Uh, so there's two points I want to bring up. One is... Being able to move around freely in an environment. That's what VR is all about. This was like a holodeck. It was a really incredible experience. Um, and, and Valve did a really good job of... Uh, of allowing the player to, to move around by having these kind of like virtual grid walls that appear anytime you get close to the bounds of your VR play space. So as you're walking, it, it's almost like it's this incredible safety net. You never need to walk around with your hands out being scared that you're going to hit a wall because you know that when you get close to those bounds, there's going to be this indicator in the form of this grid wall that just appears. And then when you walk away from it, it disappears. And it's a really, really nicely executed solution to allow for big play spaces where you can just walk freely and not need to worry about hitting anything else. So that's something that I'm really excited about and that really made uh, a VR experience that you're going to see a lot of cool things happen from that. You're going to see completely new gameplay experiences where uh, all of those uh, like uh, installation style gameplay experiences are now going to start coming into people's homes, which is something that's never happened before, and there's going to be a lot of great, interesting stuff come out from that. Um, so point number two was the motion controllers. So I've used a whole bunch of motion controllers, and these ones <laughs> blow everything else out of the water. They're tracked with the same system that tracks the headset. So very, very high precision, very low latency. But there was one thing that took me by surprise, and that was a little trick that most of the demos that I saw used, they modeled the controller that I was holding one-to-one -one exactly as, I was, as it was in the physical world, they modeled it in the virtual world. So what I saw was what I felt. The shape, the form, the texture matched what I saw. So when you see what you feel, what you see what you feel, suddenly your mind just completely gets convinced that what you see is what you're actually holding in the physical world. And that connection created a level of presence that I've never even dreamt of before. I 100% was convinced that what I saw floating around there in the virtual world was what I was holding in my hand. It didn't even matter that the rest of me was invisible. I was okay with that. That was completely irrelevant because I knew I was in that world because I could feel what I saw. And that, that was something I was not expecting at all. Uh, even as a developer and designer, I didn't realize the, the power of that one simple thing. Uh, so, as an interesting contrast, Surgeon Simulator chose not to model, uh, the Surgeon Simulator demo that I played, chose not to model the Steam controller uh, in, in the virtual world. Instead, they used hands. So you'd see floating hands where your Steam controllers were. This worked perfectly for Surgeon Simulator. Surgeon Simulator is all about like really awkward controls and the silliness that comes from that. And these were perfectly awkward for Surgeon Simulator. When I saw floating hands and I'm trying to interact, I'm trying to you know cut open this alien and things are floating around me and it was hilarious, great, a lot of fun. Um, but that would not work if you're not trying to be silly. Uh, so, so all of the, I guess, more serious demos that weren't trying to, you know, just fool around like Surgeon Simulator, and that was fantastic. Uh, all of the, the more serious demos would use just a direct one-to-one -one model, and then they'd retexture it, and things would like pop out of the top of it, and that was great. That is what gave me the connection to the virtual world that I've never experienced before. So those two points. One, being able to move around freely, and having an SDK that allows you to move around freely by having these kind of grid walls appear. Fantastic job. The second point, the motion controls, really high, high precision, really low latency, and uh, that connection to the virtual world because I can feel what I see. Those are the two things that really made Steam VR this incredible experience. So, really looking forward to it.